Welcome to Module 7, the Yoga Posture Dhanurasana Floor Bow. So in Libra season, we've just transitioned from Virgo, which deals with the large intestines, and we're going to be moving into Scorpio, which uh, relates with the reproductive organs or the regenerative organs and the organs of elimination. So between Virgo and Scorpio, we have Libra, which governs the kidneys and the lower back. So sometimes people will come in saying they feel tension in their lower back and I automatically think kidneys adrenal glands and then the associated Libra issues which have to do with not being able to be super direct and to the point and sort of being in this uh, I would say indecisive meaning that there's a sense of waiting for somebody else to make the determination and being this transition place between Virgo's organization determination and um, being committed to a thing, being committed to its sacred work. And then Scorpio having this energetic intensity and uh, just overall having real connection over its power and life force. Libra here in the center can sometimes be a place of it's like inherently weak, meaning that it's not direct, it's not, it is relational and it depends upon other things to be, um, to be what it is. So even with this placement that we have in our body, it's sort of a transition spot. I mean, it does have its own function and its own thing that it does, but by its own nature, kidneys, have a sort of chaoticness to them. In the realm of water, which kidneys are responsible for, kidneys are filtrate, uh, filtering the blood, filtering our waters in our body, and then it's like getting ready to be doing Scorpio work. So it's just, just recognizing this placement. I'm not saying that Libra doesn't have its own thing. It definitely does. But its own thing has to do with being caring and concerned for other people's things. So being relational means that we are able to take into consideration other, you know, all the other dynamics of a relationship which are not just self-centered. So the lower back can sometimes become an issue for Libra related topics. So let's look at the posture for Libra season, which is Dhanurasana Floor Bow. Again, we're looking at this book. I highly recommend getting it just because it goes over step by step the details of getting into the posture. It covers the most usual mistakes, common mistakes, and then it covers the three different layers of psychic, mental, and energetic benefits of each posture. Okay, so let's start with this. The bow gives a full backward bend to all parts of the back, combining and enhancing the benefits of cobra and locust. These three exercises from a set and should be practiced together as the forward bend flexes the spine, the bow extends it. Okay, so these three postures are, we're gonna be covering them for Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio season. Those postures for Virgo, we did Shalabhasana Locust, which focuses on the intestines. We're doing Dhanurasana Floor Bow for Libra, which focuses on the lower back and kidneys. And then we're doing uh, Bhujangasana Cobra for Scorpio season which focuses primarily on the regenerative and elimination organs. So let's go over the physical benefits. Massages and invigorates internal organs, strengthens abdominal muscles, expands the chest, enhances the elasticity of the spine, massages all muscles of the back. Mental benefits, strengthens concentration and determination, 
develops balance and harmony. So Libra is the sign of balance and harmony. So this regular practice helping to develop internal balance and harmony on the, the physical body level, which will get into our mental and our psychic levels, which will eventually start to work on the relational aspects that we have with other people, creating balance and harmony in our relationships. The energetic benefits. The person who practices the bow regularly can never be lazy, but will be full of energy, vigor, youth, and vitality. So to get into this posture, the first thing you're gonna do is lay on your belly. So I'll have to see if Neptune will let me. I've got my cat back there on my yoga mat. So we're gonna lay on our belly and there's a resting posture here that, I don't know if you can see my arms. Basically, you're making this, uh, it's called alligator posture. So your arms are just on top of each other, elbows pushed away from you so the back can be straight. So you're resting here. Then to get into the posture, you're gonna come up. You're gonna reach your arms back, grab hold of your ankle. So the thumb is pointing downward, your fingers are gripping around here. One of the common mistakes I'll see people do is grab this way, and you don't wanna do that. You wanna grab this way, and I'll explain why. Well, let's see. So here, now your wrist is out of alignment. Um, you have a tendency to dislocate your thumb because your thumb is out of alignment. This way, the angles of your joints are staying pretty much the way they're supposed to be. You want to keep your feet relaxed. So you're not doing this. See how my foot is arching out and I'm trying to, there's a lot of tension being created there. You just wanna keep everything neutral. So one of the keys with the yoga postures is that you figure out what body parts need to be contracted and relax everything else. And that just, goes for everything in life. Figure out what needs to be worked, what needs to be contracted, relax everything else. So you pick up both of your ankles, both of your hands are just in their regular straight posture. Catch hold of your ankles. If you need to, you can open your knees. It's gonna be harder as you pull your knees closer together. So knees should be touching technically. You're gonna keep your head straight. So don't cock back this way and don't tuck in too far towards your chest. You want your neck to be pretty neutral. To get into the posture, you're gonna inhale and you're gonna create this tension between your arms and legs and pull your feet away from the hands. So you just slightly arch in the back. Every time you inhale, you feel yourself rock up Every time you exhale, you rock down. From here, you can do a lot of things. You can rock the boat side to side. You can just stay here and breathe, which is what I like to do. So you can feel the tension releasing from the shoulders. To get out of the posture, it's gonna rest your knees back down. You're gonna bring the feet back to a relaxed level and you're gonna bring your arms back to that initial resting posture where the elbows are far away. Hands make a little sandwich and you're just gonna turn your head and rest. And I like to wiggle my hips just to sort of loosen up the tension in my lower back after doing that posture. I recommend doing two because after the first one, the second one's a little bit easier. So again, you're gonna reach back, catch hold of your own two ankles. You'll notice this time it's so much easier to get into. So you're gonna inhale, pull the feet away from the hands to lift yourself up.
All right, to come up, you're gonna just put your hands underneath your shoulders, push up, and then it's always good to rest in a child's pose after you practice any of the backward, for, uh, backward movements. So let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to connecting with you soon.